everyone. Um, so this month, I'm really excited to introduce you to Dacia, who's the marketing manager at Fullback Commerce. Um, Fullback Commerce is a Shopify agency who specialises in working with luxury and ethical brands. Um, and as we all know, getting uh, website visitors to subscribe is a critical first step in growing and nurturing your audience um, and turning them into loyal and engaged customers. So I'm super excited to dig into the detail on sign up forms and how you can really maximize that as an opportunity um, on the uh, session today. So, um, Dacia, welcome. Um, how are you doing? Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. I'm great, Georgie. Thanks for having me. Um, cool. So I intentionally keep these quite short and punchy. Um, so I think we better dive in. Shall we, shall we get started? Sure, let's do it. Cool. OK, so the first thing, um, just to clear anything up for, for everyone watching, um, can you clarify what exactly a sign up form is, please? Sure. So basically, a sign up form is any web form where your user is putting in data, whether that's their email, their any sort of details that you need from them that takes them one step further in the process. So that can be signing up to a newsletter, downloading something like an ebook, anything that's pushing them one step further, that's going to be your web form. Great. OK, that's super clear. And in terms of sort of conversion rates for e-commerce, what what would people be looking for as a sort of a ballpark? Absolutely. Well, I think this is very much a uh, how long is a piece of string question. Yeah. <laughs> but um, as an agency, we like to see 2% as our baseline of a healthy conversion rate for um, sign up forms that can go up into the double digits for something that's um, highly converting, such as if you're running a competition or if you've got a, um, you know, very high value lead that you're offering, a kind of a lead magnet that you're offering. Um, but that also very much depends on your industry. It depends on what the offer is that someone's trying to get through the sign up form. So we always recommend to, if you're not keeping an eye on your conversion rate, um, and by conversion rate, we also mean how many people are seeing the form versus how many people are actually filling it out successfully and hitting submit. So if you have a sense of how many people are converting on your signup form, then you, your next step will be to optimize that by testing different elements. Yeah, interesting. As you say, there's so many different variables in that, particularly around what incentive you're using to try and encourage someone to, to put their email address in, in in the first place. Absolutely. Um, cool. And uh, what are the sort of top three things you'd recommend uh, people do to increase those conversion rates? Yeah, well, when it comes to sign up forms, the biggest thing you can do, and I think that um, the first <laughs> number one of three points is going to be a whole long list in itself. But the first thing that you have to do is check that you are following usability guidelines. So there's a very good article from NN Group about these um, usability guidelines. And it's such simple things, but it genuinely does make the biggest difference. In fact, there's about 78% of people will get um, successfully through a form wow. that follows all the usability guidelines versus 42% where even one of them has gone wrong. And um, for beginners who aren't really sure what we mean by usability guidelines, we're talking about really simple things like, is the form short and easy to understand? Does it have any errors in terms of the text that you're using? Is it confusing? Um, does it follow a logical sequence? For example, if you're asking someone their location, are you, um, are you asking for their, uh, for their, there we go. So for example, if you're asking someone for their location, are you asking for their street address before or after their postcode? Simple things like that. Um, some other ones that we still see people um, forgetting when it comes to designing signup forms is um, making sure that there's no placeholder text. Placeholder text has been, at, it's kind of counterintuitive, but yeah. it actually makes it harder to fill in signup forms. Okay. And um, yeah, kind of having that optimal requirements, sorry. <laughs> making sure that you have a sense of what requirements are um, optional and what aren't. What you'll need to do is also make sure that you know 
which um, so that the user knows what is required and what is optional. For example, um, if you need their first name, but their surname is optional, you should give them that choice. Otherwise, they might say, oh, I don't want to give you my my surname. So they might not fill out the form altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the final thing in terms of usability is having very clear error messages when things do go wrong. Um, if you can have a simple error message that people can understand and bounce back from, you'll have a higher conversion rate than if you just say, nope, try again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. So I think people, yeah, even myself, I get so frustrated when you see error mm. messages and you can't work out what the error is. There's nothing yeah. worse than that. My, my favorite is uh, something has gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so the first step is, getting those basics right. And once you've got that, you need to think about strategic placement. So the full screen pop up, the, the classic uh, can't get anywhere, can't get around it pop up, does obviously have a higher conversion rate because it's in your face and you can't ignore it. But we're seeing those conversion rates drop, especially since we saw the, um, the kind of cookie apocalypse where everyone needed to opt into cookies. Now people are starting to just blindly close whatever boxes they see that's getting in the way of them in the website. So what we're finding works better is either having a sign up form um, kind of fly in or, or slide in from the side or from the footer. Um, and then the third thing that I would say um, really affects the conversion rate is personalization. Mm -hmm. um, personalizing your form means not only personalizing the content of your form, knowing exactly the, the kind of language your customers speak, what, uh, what phrasing they would use to refer to certain things, but also having a sense of um, when they would be most likely to sign up, having a sense of, um, you know, if you're having your sign up form on your on your home page, knowing how long people will scroll before they're comfortable seeing a sign up form. So gathering that data and um, optimizing it is definitely going to improve conversion rates on those forms. Yeah, cool. It's uh, so interesting how you say about people just getting kind of fatigue around just closing all of the different pop ups and things that are in their way of actually getting to the content they want to see. And it's always becoming a kind of ingrained behavior rather than, yeah. actually, you know, what they're closing. We're, um, just, ap we're just closing everything. Yeah. We, it could yeah. it, one of those pop ups might actually be trying to give you a million pounds and you'll just close it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. And then do you have any examples um, of opt in forms that have been really effective that you might be able to share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for us, we're definitely seeing the um, the opt in forms or sign up forms that are right at the bottom of the um, it are placed very prominently in the footer. Um, Pi Skincare, which is one of our clients, has a really strong um, call to action, which is subscribe to our newsletter for 15% off your first order. I'll, um, I'll share those images with you so we can, um, so everybody can see exactly <laughs> what we mean when we say what's a good sign up form. And um, yeah, it's a really simple form. It just asks for your email and because they're a skincare company, they say your skin type and it's just a simple drop down menu. Is your skin sensitive? Yes, no, sometimes and sign up. So you're already getting a lot of data from that, that those three fields, but it's so simple for the user because all they're doing is typing their email and then making two other choices. So it's, um, it's not the sort of thing where you, what you could try and do to get the same data is say, describe your skin type. And that would be probably much lo lower converting than having people make simple choices that then helps you, once you have their data, to segment them and give them the content that they really want. <laughs> Another um, cool sign up form that uh, I have in my swipe file is there's a um, an email opt in from a little company called Hipmunk, which uh, they do flight uh, kind of you know, flight sales and that sort of yeah. thing. And they are this type of site that because they're dealing with so much data, they do have load times that can often get people to click away because when you're searching through thousands of flights, it's difficult yeah. to keep people engaged. So what they've done is they've created their newsletter sign up 
that shows only when you are waiting those few seconds for your results to load. And I just, I love that. I think it's so clever because not only does it uh, give them something to look at and something to engage with yeah. while it loads, but it also creates kind of a sense of urgency, like, oh, yeah. I better sign up before the... <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I think that looking at places where um, your your user or your your viewer is stopping and kind of having a little resting point, whether that's at the bottom of your home page or you know browsing in between different blog yeah. posts, have really understanding how people use your website and how they experience it and putting those opt-in forms right in that perfect moment of they're resting they're relaxed they've already gotten some value out of it yeah. i think that absolutely the the biggest thing that we see when optimizing sign up forms is that people want to get to know what the content is on the website first they um they don't want to kind of, you know, you don't want to kind of open your front door and somebody sticks a flyer in your face, right? You want to, um, you want to go through, you want to be able to read, to browse, to take your time to figure out if you actually want to go further with this. For a sign up form, you really need to make sure that you're attracting people higher up in the funnel that will be interested in what you've got to offer. And of course, offering them something interesting, whether it's, you know, cool insights from a newsletter, a certain discount, um, you know, a sense of uh, pre-orders or getting a sense of uh, what's coming up next, knowing what they value and offering that really clearly makes a huge difference. Yeah, totally. I can imagine that um, 100%. And the last question for you today is around uh, A-B testing and how you'd suggest brands approach A-B testing sign-up forms. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know why I just say absolutely when I have nothing to say. <laughs> I think we should actually post this just unedited so people yeah. see how messy I am. <laughs> so of course, um, the first thing you'll want to test is um, your placement. Where are you actually putting your form? Is it working better in the footer? Is it working better as kind of a slide out? Um, as a slide out or a fly in, fly in, fly out. I guess it's flying in. <laughs> um, just to see where people are. And, and what's important with A-B testing is to always just test one thing at a time. If um, you're changing colors and text and fields and, uh, and placement, you're not going to really be able to tell what's working and what's not because you're testing apples versus oranges. So always testing one thing at a time, making sure that you've got a sense of um, your usability guidelines really, really slick and, and down pat. And also knowing um, in terms of keeping form simple, we basically say if someone in your company is arguing about the form should have this or shouldn't have that, that's the sort of thing you should be A-B testing yeah. instead of arguing <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. So yeah, um, so testing placement, um, testing copy on it, making sure that it's as simple as it can be, and, um, and also trying to test um, how it performs on, on mobile versus on desktop and figuring out, um, it's not just about testing conversions, it's also seeing the quality of those conversions. Mm -hmm. So you might have a higher conversion rate on, on um, you know, with, with a certain call to action or with a certain offer, but at the end of the day, are those customers or those subscribers acting how you want them to act? Are they, are they your target market? So it really does come down to A-B testing being a fundamental um, cog in the machine of testing your entire funnel. Yeah, yeah interesting. Oh, that's so, so cool. Um, I've definitely learned uh, quite a lot then, so thank you so much. And I'm I think sure... I, I just flooded you with information. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone listening will have learned at least a couple of things from that as well. So thank you wow. so much, Dasi. It's been really great to chat to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Georgie.